What's good, YouTube boy? It's your boy Dev back again. Another review. Now, a lot of you guys, if you missed it, you missed it. I suck to say. I was going to upload the YouTube reaction, but, uh, you know, a lot of people were getting mad and a lot of people were complaining, saying that, oh, if you're going to do it on Twitch, then you might as well not even upload it on YouTube. Fine. Um, I'm not going to upload it on YouTube. I'll just do a review. <laughs> but uh, if you want the full video, it's on Twitch, or you want the full video, it's on Patreon. I advise Patreon. And we're going to keep it like that. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. But. Today, man, we're going to talk about Polo G's album, The GOAT. Um, 16 track LP, uh, you know, from one of Chicago's youngest shining stars. A lot of you love Polo G just because of the fact that he's just an actual, um, you know, lyrical rapper. Or I would say not a lyrical rapper, but a content rapper. Um, he speaks about struggle music, kind of what we got from Roddy Ridge, kind of what we got from um, the Raw Waves. And if you guys want my opinion, I do say that. Um, between the three, I would say Polo G is at the top, quite equal to Rod Wave in terms of speaking about that real shit and how they do it, just really straightforward to the point, more about the lyrical trap sound. My thing, I think I should talk about the pros first before I actually talk about the cons of what I, you know, about the album. First of all, I want to say, man, uh, there's not a lot of artists that have the credibility and the experience at Polo G, especially at a young age. Um, you know, he talks about his upcoming, he talks about... His struggle, I love how he always, from what I did from the first listen, even towards the end of the album, I like how he always kind of just has his little sister kind of looking up to him because he is the role model to his little sister, you know, um, saying that, he, you know, he's going to provide for his family, he's going to provide for his friends, he's going to make it out, you know, a situation. I always tell you guys that someone has to be a janitor in this world. Someone has to be a janitor and someone will be a CEO. Not a lot of people really understand that, but what you do is you work hard to create opportunity to, you know, make your, make, make your situation better. Not everybody is always going to make it out, but you always want to work hard and say, you know, leave no regrets in the grave. So I feel like with Polo G, man, he's made it. He's definitely still humble. Um, he's young, so he's, he's gonna buy his flashy shit, but from what I saw, man, he's not really that flashy from what I like, and I like that, man. I like when people are really smart with their money. I like when really people are really not just kind of just showboating, you know, they gloating. Um, the, the problem, though, is without this album, with, throughout this album, man, is it's, it's just, it sounds like the production is what's lacking. I think that... You know, while a lot of other people agreed, even when you watch the Twitch stream, as real as real as he is, man, as real as a lot of the things he's saying throughout this album, you know, my favorite tracks on here, if you guys don't know, Flex, RP to Juice. I love the um the, the 2133. I like how that, that, that album was titled or that track was titled because, you know, Juice World and uh, Nipsey, you know, passing away, you know, he kind of paying homage to those two with 2133. 21 was the better of the of the two. Um, I also like Be Something with Lil Baby, um, Trials and Tribulations, Chinatown, Wishing for a Hero, obviously would be the Chicago Kid, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. But I think that, you know, one problem that Polo G has, and it's an easy, it's a, it's an easy fix, right? It's an easy fix. He needs to get better production. Um, I know that you guys don't like me saying this, but Wheezy, I feel like, and Turbo are kind of just like the number one trap sounds right now in terms of just, you know, producers, trap sound. I guess you could put Pierre up there as well. But I feel like a lot of these tracks, especially on Chinatown, man, it sounds like a... And Wheezy said it perfectly. Wheezy just perfects what he does with the sound, and a lot of people try to bite that. One thing I can say that I respect is, some of you guys said this, that... He's trying to, aside from Mustard, and I know he had a couple other big producers on this tape, aside from that, having his friends produce it around him, you know what I'm saying, like trying to get them some money, trying to get them a bag. If that's true, I don't know if that's true, don't quote me on that, I think that's amazing, man. Again, while it is amazing, you still got to talk about the music from a sonical standpoint. I just don't think that there was nothing that really stood out other than the last track you know, that really stood out for me. Everything that he's saying, I always tell you guys, man, you could be saying the hardest shit ever. You can literally be speaking the spiritual, spiritual lyrical throughout this whole project, right? But if it's over, Twinkle Twinkle had a little star, you know what I'm saying? And as much as a kid thing to say that is, like, it's not gonna sound good. Like, you speaking about hood shit on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, it's not gonna sound good. Going a little exaggeration there, saying how these beats are equivalent to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I'm just saying that that's an example, right? He needs to find somebody else to produce for him. He needs to find different variety to produce for him. He needs a different change up in the album, especially if it's going to be a little long. 16 is perfect for me, but again, it got a little repetitive towards, you know, it got a little repetitive. And I know a lot of the Polo G stands, 
that you guys were loving it. A lot of you guys were talking about Dante as much as I love Dante. I know Dante loves Polo G. Um, I'm not Dante. Um, I'm Devin Dorsey. So I like what I like. You know what I'm saying? And I, I see things after I've listened to many albums every single day, you know, probably about 70 albums a year. You know, you just got to have something that's really going to stand out for me. Even when it comes to a trap album, I think Roddy Rich is a perfect example why he's not as real as the um, as the two Rod Wave. The problem that Rod Wave and Polo G have for me is they're just a little bit too repetitive. If you're going to be repetitive, keep it at 9, 10 tracks. See something like what um, Don Tolliver did. You see how Don Tolliver kept it really short? Didn't get too much repetitive, and it got straight to the point. Now, we can talk about the last track, which is Wishing for a Hero. And this is the track that really stood out to everybody because of why. I'll give you guys five seconds. Tupac. Now, I know we don't have to like the same music, but I hate when a lot of people were disrespected in my Twitch chat saying that Tupac, is, you know, this song was better than Tupac Changes. Tupac Changes is not even that good. You can see the song is not good, but at least give it respect that it is one of the premier hip-hop songs in rap history. Um, it will always be a staple. And the fact that everybody's favorite track is this wishing for a hero also the one with juice world is you know it was like 50 50 when i asked wishing for a hero it's because it uses a legendary sample and changes and an established already beat in the world like you gotta see where it comes how far a beat can take you i love in that song though how bj the chicago kid was a great ad you know adding a little bit of vocals in there i loved how in changes from tupac it's kind of just like we need to get better you know what I'm saying? We need to find a way to progress. We need to find a way to, you know, do things to kind of just not stay stagnant and not stay in this same realm. And I feel like with Wishing for a Hero, it was the, quite the opposite. It's like, yo, shit has gone down. Shit ain't never going to change. Like, it's never going to change. We're forever going to be stuck in this hole. We're forever going to be grinding. We're forever going to be struggling. We're forever going to be stuck in a trap. I think that, that that was a really cool flip how he did that. And I can definitely see why it was a heartfelt track, man. Because, again, Polo G, while his lyrical... Bro, his, nothing is wrong with his lyrics. His lyrics are literally A1. It's just the sounds that he needs to to um, to be behind him, man. He, def he definitely needs something to kind of just give somebody a different climate. Because anybody that's going to this, well, anybody that's not a fan, that's just a music listener, you know, loves all types of music, they're going to go into this and they're going to say, hey, man, look, it was an amazing album from everything that he was saying, talking about his experiences, upcoming but when you got 12 tracks on here that literally sound at the same, at the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, and, and you know, you can't deny that it sounds the same. I'm sorry. It just feel like it gets a little bit, uh, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say here. It just gets a little bit, sounds just like one big loop is what it really sounds like. Sounds like one big loop. And for you guys to say it doesn't sound like, fine. If you guys have that ear where you don't, you don't hear that, then all means, you know, it's cool. I'm not mad at that. I'm just saying from how I feel on my standpoint. But other than that, man, if I had to give that album a rating, I would probably give it what I gave it before, which was a 7.5 out of 10. Definitely would have been higher if it had better production. Um, and it, it changed. Actually, it was a 7 when I said it first. and definitely grows to a 7.5 because, again, I can get behind Polo G. I can de Pause. I can get behind what Polo G is saying. I can definitely understand where he's coming from. I can definitely respect how he just loves his family. He wants to do good for his sister. He wants to do good for his friends. He wants everybody to su succeed. I can get behind that. I Like, all of the things he's talking about, I respect to a T. The only problem I have is just from a sonical standpoint where it just does, it sounds the same. That's the only problem I have. So, for it to still sound the same and still, for me, get a 7.5, the things he has to say has to be massive. And it exactly was that. It was massive, man. I loved everything he was talking about. And again, I don't want to sound like a broken record. He just needs to get a better production team behind him. So we're going to keep it like that, man. Get in the comments below, man. Let me know what's your favorite track. Let me know what you think about the album. Um, another thing, too, I want to talk about before I go, man. Um, I'm, when I first came into it, I gave it a 7. And that was just for the fact that when people hype you, you know, again, I'm human. I'm going to kind of listen to that. And then I'm kind of going to let it affect me a little bit. In the end of the day, though, man, I'm going to come to my own opinion. Um, but when everybody's calling this the GOAT, everybody's calling this the best rap album of the year, everybody's calling this, you know, legendary level, everybody's calling this classic status, I think a lot of people actually throw that, you know, these vinyls that I get on my wall, they take time, all right? Like, I'm not, the only vinyl I probably can say that I ordered right off the get-go was Igor Special Edition that this girl was going to get for me that I was talking to, and then in the end, I'm not working out, I didn't get that. But... I'm not buying vinyls or I'm not buying albums immediately that are not, you know what I'm saying, that don't have a long-term last with me. 
So when you guys are calling this album the best album to date, the GOAT album, you know, nothing is topping this. I'm, and now, I'm ready now. Kendrick levels. It's Kendrick levels at this point. I'm thinking to Pippa Butterfly. And, and, and that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you guys hyped that. So I'm instantly thinking to Pippa Butterfly. I'm comparing him. This is not to Pippa Butterfly. Sorry to tell you guys. All right? Sorry to tell you guys. But um, it definitely was one of the best hip-hop albums this year. I will give it that. Uh, we still have a lot of the Lear left. We still have J. Cole left. We still have Kendrick left. We still have Isaiah Rashad left. We still have a lot of artists that can definitely take that title away. But for right now, man, definitely one of the best albums um, out this year from Polo G in terms of hip-hop. And I'm going to keep it like that, man. Get in the comments below, man. Let me know what's your favorite track. Let me know which tracks you dislike. Let me know if you could thought the same thing that I thought. It was repetitive. Let me know if you guys agree that he needs a, same, you know, a different producer or if you guys think he's fine just the way he is. Let me know if you think 16 was a great length for the album or could, maybe he could have made it a little short. Get in the comment box below. Let me know all that good stuff. Sorry for closing my eyes. I just can't really open my eyes right now. It's kind of bright in here. My Asian going in. Um, till the next time, it's me, boy, Dev. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on what you want to hear. And until the next time, man, we are out. Peace.